Thanks for joining us on our webinar, learning about stormwater pollution, CSOs, and what you can do to help. And of course, one of those things is to install a rain barrel at your house. So today we're going to talk with you a little bit about how to install your rain barrel, some safety concerns, mosquitoes, and then also how to paint your barrel. If you have any questions afterwards, please contact me or Leanne Grog. This barrel is from the Pocatalico Trading Post in Sissonville, West Virginia. Um, they run around $20 depending on how much, how many you get. Um, we really like to use these barrels in our rain barrel workshops because it is a food grade barrel. So this, in its previous life, held olives in it. Um, so there's nothing corrosive or nasty that's been in this barrel before. Another thing we really like about it is the color. Uh, most people don't have to paint this type of barrel because it kind of blends into the surroundings a little bit. Also, where it has this color um, and it's not clear or white, it keeps light from penetrating in through the plastic and that reduces your chance of having algae grow in it. Another cool feature is that this barrel is kind of like a mason jar. It has a ring and it has a lid. So this makes for really easy cleaning whenever you need to winterize your barrel, which we'll be covering later. While we're talking about barrels, there's also different types of barrels that you can use. You don't have to use this type. Um, many of you might be familiar with the 55 gallon blue drums and those make excellent rain barrels as well. The color is sometimes off-putting to people and they can be more difficult to clean out. Um, most of those barrels also usually contain soap or a syrup in them, so initially you might have to do a little bit more scrubbing to get them ready. This barrel here just needs washed out with some soap and water and it's ready for use. What you absolutely should never use as a rain barrel is a trash can. Trash cans are meant to hold trash and not water and they will split and you might have a pretty big water accident right next to the foundation of your house. So please don't ever use a trash can as a rain barrel. If you do use a white barrel, you definitely need to paint it or you will have long filamentous algae growing in your barrel. When you go to install this barrel at your house, once it's full of water, it can weigh up to 460 pounds or even a little bit over that. So we wanna ensure that they're installed very safely so that this weight doesn't tip and fall on a child or yourself or on any of your animals. We know that West Virginia, uh, we do not have too many flat spaces. So you do need to carve out a place that is nice and flat and level for your barrel to set on before you even get started. To do that, measure up where you want the barrel to be next to your downspout. Make sure the ground is nice and flat. You might need to use a shovel to remove some dirt to do that. Or if you would like to elevate your barrel, you wanna do that before you actually install it next to your downspout. To elevate your barrel, you wanna ensure that it is extremely safe because again, this can weigh almost 500 pounds. Most people like to put it simply on top of cinder blocks, and that's a great thing to use. It's very cost efficient. You do need three cinder blocks um, to put this on top of. And whenever you install those cinder blocks, make sure that there's a flat linear surface so the holes are pointing out to the sides. Some people also like to include a strap that could go around your barrel and this would just help it keep it, um, from moving around if it was windy and it wasn't full of water yet. So this is just another precaution that you could put around your barrel to make sure that it's safe and not going to tip over on anybody. But the main thing is to make sure that the ground is flat. This is the part kit that you received as part of our virtual workshop. So you can purchase this part kit on your own. It's not something that is sold through DEP. Um, you can do this by going to several of the big box hardware stores. They sell this part kit. Um, you can also get it at Green's Feed and Seed in Charleston. And there's several sites that you can order it online. Rainbarrelparts.com is usually where we purchase them or we get them from Green's in Charleston. These part kits run about $24 to $36. The price can range quite a bit depending on where you get it from. The reason we really like this kit is that it's very affordable and then it can be adjusted to fit two different sizes of downspouts. So a two by three downspout or a three by four uh, larger downspout. Also, it can be fitted onto any type of barrel. So if you use a, a blue 55 gallon drum or you use this olive barrel here or a pickle barrel um, or even a wooden barrel, this kit can be fitted to that barrel. So that's a really nice feature too. 
So let's cut it open and see what's inside. So inside of this part kit, you have your whole soles. So there's three different sizes here and you will be using all three of them. This is the pipe that connects from your downspout into your barrel and it makes a really fun sound. So you might want to stretch it out completely so you can see exactly how far your barrel can be from your downspout. This is the crown jewel of the kit. This is the diverter. This fits inside of your downspout and diverts water into your barrel and we'll go over this more. This is a cap that you can put over your downspout whenever you winterize it, which we'll be covering. You also have three rubber gaskets that you'll be using that are also included in your kit. There is a spigot and there's also, we call it a drain tube. Um, but you can attach a hose to this. It's just another method that you can get water outside of your barrel. You can also attach a hose to your spigot. And you can put these wherever you want on your barrel. Some people put them up high or down low, depending on if you elevate it or not. And I'll go over that a little bit more. Also inside the kit is a don't drink water sticker. And this is something that DEP definitely suggests and encourages you to not drink the water that goes into this barrel, but you can use it for many other methods. Once you have your barrel elevated um, or on a nice flat level foundation, however you want to do it, you want to get this device stretch it out and make sure that it's going to be able to reach from your downspout over into your barrel. So measure that out and make sure that it is nice and um, that it has a distance to be able to reach your barrel. If you have it closer together, that's fine. Now whenever you install this feature, it's very important that it does not look like this because water will be able to get into your barrel, but once this barrel is full, it will not be able to get back out. So that's why we like to have it straight across, and you might even want to use a level when you go to install this to make sure that you do have it straight across. If you have it too low, conversely, water will not be able to get into the barrel, but it will be able to leave if it got full. So again, Make sure that this is straight across before you drill into your barrel for the top piece and before you drill into your downspout. So you might want to use a level to identify and mark on your barrel exactly where you're going to be drilling it. Notice that I have this down just a little bit. I'm not going to be drilling up into the top part because the barrel is quite curved towards the top. You can even have it down a little bit lower, such as down here, if you wanted to. This is your barrel, so you can customize it however you'd like. After that, you're going to measure across using a level to make sure that it's straight, and you can place a mark on your downspout. After you do that, you need to use your medium drill bit so your medium hole saw, and you're going to drill directly into the top part of that barrel. It's very important that you keep this straight across and that you don't have your drill tilted up or tilted down or to one of the sides. This will result in a larger hole than what you need and the fittings will not fit as well. So make sure that you're drilling in very, uh, perpendicular. So after you have this hole drilled, you're going to be using this fitting. There's only one of them in your kit, and you're just going to pop that into the hole. You then use the tube to connect into that fitting, and this tube will connect over to your downspout once you drill that, but remember that's the last thing that you do. Whenever you go to install your spigot and your drain tube, there's really um, unlimited options of where you can install that at. 
Some people like to have the spigot up a little bit off of the ground, especially if they don't elevate their barrel. And this can allow them to get a watering can underneath the spigot. Some people elevate their barrel up. And so maybe they put both their spigot and their drain tube down at the bottom. This is just two different ways that you can get water out of your barrel. So customize it to whatever is going to fit for your house. One thing that we do recommend is that you don't put them right next to each other or that you don't put them right over top of each other. Um, if you have a hose attached to one, it might be hard to get your watering can in there. Or if you have a hose attached to the top one, you might not be able to get to the bottom one. So usually we encourage people to offset them or if they have them down at the bottom, have them pointing off in two different directions. You will be using your small drill bit, your small hole saw, to drill these holes at the bottom. Make sure that you're following the same procedures as before and keeping that drill very straight and flush to the barrel and not at an angle. After you've completed drilling into the barrel for those, you're gonna be taking this gasket and you push it up into a U shape so you fold it into a U-shape or a smiley face or a sad face, and then you pop that into the corner and just roll it out with your finger. As you might notice, this has threads in it so that your spigot can easily screw into it. When you do begin screwing this into there, make sure that you keep it nice and flush. If you're doing this on a cold day, you might wanna use pliers to tighten this down if it's too hard to do by hand. Same goes for this little piece. When you go to install that, you will also be using one of these tear-shaped gaskets. So you're gonna squeeze it into that U again, smiley face, plug it into the hole, and then you can hand screw this into it, making sure that align the threads. So let's, start, let's talk about your diverter part. This is what's gonna fit into your downspout. You will be using your large drill bit your large hole saw to drill into your downspout. This should be the very last step that you do. So imagine this is your downspout and you have used your hole saw, the large size, to drill this out. Make sure that you're wearing safety glasses. Afterwards, you're gonna take your diverter and you just squeeze the lips of this up and you plug it into your downspout. So here's what that looks like from a cross section. So as water flows down your downspout, it's attracted to the outside of your downspout. That's because of cohesion and adhesion. When it hits that, it, hits, it runs into the lip of the diverter and then it's going to flow this way out of your downspout. If you're like my mother, you might install it upside down. If you install it upside down, no water will be able to enter into your downspout. So again, this is the correct way that it needs installed with the cups facing up. Also included in your kit are two Phillips head screws. These screws can be used to ensure that your diverter does not move around whenever you have it installed. These are an optional thing to use. You don't have to use them. The diverter normally doesn't move around at all. If you are installing this in a three by four downspout, then you might want to use the screws that's much larger. And if you're installing it on a three by four downspout, you will be drilling into the side of it rather than the front of it. The final thing that you have in your kit is the do not drink water. And just be mindful and think about that water and um, where it's coming from. It's washing off of your roof. It's going down through your gutters and down through your downspout. So it might pick up bird feces or insects. And that's why we encourage you to not drink your water. But you can use it for many other things. So let's talk about mosquitoes. We don't want mosquitoes living inside of your barrel, on top of your barrel, and biting anybody and creating a health concern. 
Another reason we really like this rain barrel cart kit and this barrel setup is because it's a closed system. So there's no way for an animal to fly directly into the barrel without going through all the different pipes. So a mosquito would have to fly through your gutter system, down your downspout, through the diverter to get into your barrel. And if you're using the water in your barrel, which we highly encourage you to do, don't just port it, use that water, um, it's going to flush out anything that might get into it. We've never had any issues with mosquitoes getting inside the barrels and breeding and creating any type of health issue. Now, with this type of barrel, unlike the blue 55 gallon drum, there's this perfect area at the top of the barrel. This is the perfect breeding ground for a mosquito. It's shallow, it's gonna heat up very quickly, and water can pull in the top. So to avoid getting water in here, maybe you can have your barrel be underneath an eave of your roof. That would reduce the chances of water pulling here. Another thing that you can do is get a flower and place on top of it. This potted flower will soak up the water that's in there and reduce your chances of having mosquito larvae live in there. And just to recap um, on how mosquitoes life cycle works, after a female mosquito deposit, deposits her eggs, it will take them around 48 hours to hatch. After they hatch out, they turn into a larvae. They last in that stage and grow anywhere between seven to eight days, up to 10 days even. After that, they then turn into a pupa. They emerge from the pupa and go into, and turn into a flying insect at that point. So it can take about a week to a week and a half for a mosquito to fully develop. So if you spot eggs anywhere at the top of your barrel and you don't have a plant there, you can always put a little drop of bleach in there and that will kill off the larvae so they cannot fully develop. So let's talk about winterizing your barrel. You'll need to do this whenever the temperatures in your area start to drop to around freezing. You can do it before though if you would like. At least once a year, you need to fully wash out your barrel. So if this was my barrel at my house, I would remove my plant, I would screw off the lid, and I'd wash it out with soap and water. Once it had dried, I would then store it in a location that it was out of UV light, so away from sunshine, and also just away from water so it won't get more in it. The part that you have in your downspout, you can simply pull back out and store with your barrel. There's a part in your kit that attaches onto here and you will need the screws for this to keep that hole covered so that water doesn't splash out in the winter months. It's very important that you winterize your barrel so that the spigots and the rubber components on here do not stretch and flex because we all know whenever water freezes, it expands. And if this barrel is completely full of water, it can actually crack the barrel right in half if you do not winterize it. So if you'd like to see this last longer than just one year, make sure that you winterize it. This will also reduce bacteria that could grow in your barrel um, by cleaning it at least once a year. But you can do that more often if you'd like. Thank you for attending this workshop and learning about how to install your rain barrel safely. Now I'm going to turn it over to Leanne Grog and she is going to show you how to paint your barrel. Thanks Tommy. My name is Leanne Grog and I'm with the City of Charleston Stormwater Department. And I'm going to talk to you today about painting a barrel. Very simple. It can be done in the afternoon. Any age can do it. Kids to even grandparents. First thing you'll need to do is clean your barrel. You'll want to wash it with a little soap and water, and then a light sanding, rough it up a bit. That's a very important part of making your barrel paint last longer. After you've sanded it, another little wipe with soapy water and uh, a rag to get all that dust particles off, you're, re you're set to go. First thing you want to do is, we've come a long way in acrylic paint, and you can buy this um, Paint Plus Primer for plastic at virtually every hardware store. 
The great thing about painting something like a plastic barrel today is, number one, we don't have to worry about oil-based paint. Number two, plastic primer and paint now comes in the same can in essentially every color. So if you find your paint that is paint plus primer, all you'll have to do is once your barrel's dry, you can start the process of painting. I will tell you, you're gonna need two spray paint cans to get a good full coverage on your barrel. And you can stop there if you wanna paint it a color to match your house or something that blends in more with your garden, you're fine. If you do stop there, you'll need to put a clear sealer on it. The better the sealer and the long, more coverage you get with your seal, sealer, the longer this will last. One thing I don't ever recommend is painting the top of your barrel. Water sits in there and no matter how well you treat it, sand it, prime it, and then uh, clear coat it or protect it, it will, uh, it will start to break up. So I would, if you can, keep that top unpainted. If you want to paint a decoration or the kids want to do something or you're having a, I don't know, a reunion party or something like that, there's a lot of different methods you can use to paint it that you don't have to be an artist. If you are an artist, you already know what you need to do. If you're not sure and you feel a little skittish, there's no reason to do that. First of all, you can always tape off a design. Here I just taped off an A. You could tape off lattice work, anything like that. Do your first coat of one color, go over it with your second color, pull your tape, and you've got a design. This doesn't take hardly any artistic ability whatsoever. The second thing you can do if you feel a little shy is find a stencil. And a stencil doesn't have to be a traditional stencil. Here I have um, just a sprig of fern from the dollar store. It can act as a stencil on your barrel that you could do all over. I'll give you a little example. We'll see how it looks. Use the same blue that we used for our A. And you can make a little, uh, as detailed or as dark as you want, a little uh, foliage look there. Of course, this can be done with the sun. If you have a cutout of apples or anything that you want to do on there, you can always use a stencil when you're feeling a little shy. And then of course, the last thing that you can do, if you do want to venture into it, this is just a quick flower. You don't have to be, you don't have to be a great artist to do it. I, you can see here, I've, all I've done is just, I've just done little squigs like this to make the leaves. And then I'm gonna go back in and fill this center in and a pop of red takes no, not a lot of skill at all. Once you've painted your barrel, decorated your barrel, finished the application, there always has to be that clear coat. We discussed it earlier before you started painting. This is just a lacquer. Any kind of clear coat will do. You'll want to try to get a full can on there. Uh, as with the color, you can't see this, so you feel like maybe I've got enough. This took two cans to properly coat the barrel. You want to use at least one and go over it, let it dry, go over it, let it dry, go over it, and let it dry. Then your barrel will be protected as much as possible uh, throughout the summer. If you do paint your barrel or you're interested or want more information, you can always go to uh, charlestonstormwater.org. We have brochures on our website that go over the same instructions that I've just gone over. Yeah, thanks for joining mine and Tommy's webinar. Um, if you do paint your barrel, we'd love to see it. You can share it on uh, either Facebook page, West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection, or Charleston Stormwater Program. Thank you.